Hey, everybody. So let's pick up a research paper is called Thinking Beyond Tokens, From Brain-Inspired Intelligence to Cognitive Foundations for Artificial General Intelligence and Its Societal Impact. It's put out by, like, every institution on the planet, basically. Like, uh, there's, like, uh, Amazon, Meta, like, it says outside of them, but uh, University of Texas, uh, Central Florida, Orlando, Cor Cornell, I'm leaving off a whole bunch, right? Like, it's just, like, a whole slew of institutions from around the world. Uh, and then this is like, so this is like that type of research paper that you would want to document and then utilize for planning, for uh, having a conversation with a client, like just for general things about this overall. And then so this research paper is fundamental for understanding frameworks outside of next token prediction. Like when it comes to AI overall, like the big knock a lot of people try to make is that they're just simply next token predictors, right? And that's all that the models do. And then within that, like that particular framing and understanding is uh, outdated <laughs> at this point. AI moves very fast and very quickly. Like I don't think people are understanding exactly how fast this technology is moving and advancing within these things. Like there's so much money being poured into it. Uh, uh, from all different angles overall, that what you think is true a year ago, two years ago, is no longer relevant, right? And then so uh, when it comes to like saying that these, like the knock that these models are next, are just simply just next token predictors that couldn't be further from the truth with regards towards current architectures. And that includes the Transformers architecture 100%, right? Like uh, the Transformers architecture in 2025 is not the Transformers architecture from 2017. <laughs> like they're, they are two vastly different animals uh, uh, overall, right? Like they might, like uh, you could look at it like Transformers 1.0 compared to we'd be on like Transformers 35.5 right now. Like that'd be kind of like, where it's at as far as the progression of it and in it. And this paper does a very good job of summarizing all of that because so uh, essentially like the first thing that they do is they give you a, a solid understanding of like AGI and its progression, like uh, how it started. And then, so it started with next token prediction, right? And then, but uh, early on from the 1950s, it was known that next token prediction models uh, aren't gonna be the future, right? Next token prediction models capture surface linguistic patterns but fail to support complex mental representations grounded in the physical world, lacking embodiment, causal, causality, and self-reflection. They struggle with abstraction and goal-oriented behavior, core requirements for AGI. This is all known, right? Uh, and then so it's also known that post-training and alignment can't bridge the gap to AGI because post-training methods such as instruction tuning and uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback transform base models like GPT into more usable agents like ChatGPT. However, these alignment methods operate on top of token level prediction and cannot endow models with poor AGI traits, such as abstraction, grounded reasoning, or envi uh, environmental awareness. And so why further scaling will not lead to AGI? Why sc while scaling improves fluency and performance on many tasks, it cannot resolve core limitations of current LLMs. These models still lack grounded understanding, causal reasoning, memory, and goal-oriented behavior. So then how exactly do we fix those things? We can fix these things through a few things algorithmically, right? The first algorithm they introduce is tra trajectory-based planning via decision transformers. And then so, very specifically, this algorithm transforms a transformer model, like the, the default next token predictor, into a decision transformer, something that has a completely different reward mechanism and a completely different structure. Uh, and then the second one is, is that we can add reasoning to that, right? Chain of thought, tree of thought, uh, different types of reasoning aspects to that. And then when we combine these two things, they move far beyond next token prediction. And then so AI integration and the need for democratization without inclusive development AI may amplify existing inequalities and silence underrepresented voices. And then so uh, then they go through kind of the historical evolution of AI, and then they get into agentic AI, understanding intelligence, the logical foundations of intelligence. So they dive into brain functionality overall. They have a really cool timeline. I haven't seen a timeline exactly break it down in this way. Um, and then so they break it down uh, into the early foundations. Then you have Mycin and like the like uh, real based expert systems like the ELISA models, things like that. Bayesian networks in the 19th and the 1980s. CNNs that come out in 1988. Deep Blue in 97. Uh, then you get Deep, Deep Belief networks in 2006. 
Alex, Alex, Alex Net in 2010, the DQN networks in 2013. This is when people start first paying attention to AI again uh, in the like mid 2000s. Then you get AlphaGo in 2016. Attention is all you need in 2017. And then now we're like up here, right? Then it talks a lot about brain functionality, memory overall, memory, how it relates to AI as well as human concepts. And the big concept within this is that like we need memory as well as uh, like a grounded eye are like the two big things that are missing within the models currently, right? Uh, and then how that breaks down uh, into brain structure. And then so brain structure versus exactly how we have it mapped out. Um, and then uh, how human memory is mapped out to our understanding, human actions, et cetera. It's just essentially... This is a giant blueprint of our current understanding of the brain uh, and uh, how that works out into AI, right? Like these types of diagrams of, and where it's going here and into like brains, human actions, human memory, et cetera. These aren't designed for um, a psychologist, for a doctor, et cetera. They're designed very specifically for someone like me, right? For a, a computer engineer to come in and then understand, okay, this is uh, this relates to uh, my computer language understand my, my computer understanding, uh, and then it's putting it more into terms with regards towards a like, computer science than oh, any sort of like biological science or things like that. This makes sense to me. It's decision trees, hierarchies. Uh, there's a, you know rules, uh, and then I, I I can follow this very specifically uh, to create blueprints within this. Right? It's again geared towards me, <laughs> and, and then so then you get uh, essentially. Uh, further breakdown of to as to into these concepts right so this spends like a lot of time here with regards towards the cognitive aspects of everything that we know around these things and then again the cognitive aspects of everything that we know related to these things as it relates to ai so a key insight that we currently understand from this is from brain networks to agi architecture cognitive neuroscience reveals that intelligence arises from dynamic flexible interaction between brain networks Translating these principles into AGI design via hybrid architectures, modular agents, and adaptive control hubs could enable machines to emulate human-like flexibility, reasoning, and learning. There'll be people that will disagree with that. We'll find out in the end. <laughs> right. It's going to be one way or the other. Uh, and, uh, I mean, at this point, like, the research is kind of unstoppable within it no matter what. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, this section is very cool, right? This breaks down into a uh, knowledge distillation. And then so like uh, kind of the biology behind it, but then also it, this is uh, starts introducing the models that are associated with this. So if you're very big into knowledge dis distillation, you'll be very, very big into uh, KANs, uh, which I've gone over a little bit on my channel before. I have a few videos on them overall. But uh, so just giving you kind of the, the key insights and the correlation between those two things. And then essentially, this breaks down intelligence as a form of learning compressed representation. That's our understanding of this uh, as it works overall, right? The, the, the models take representations of your data set and a low dimensional representation, like a projection, like a two dimensional projection of the, the data set. And that's typically what they like to work off of and work towards. Then it gets into explainable AI, the frameworks behind that the generalization and deep learning. And then so like all throughout this, you're going to see all different types of models, right? And then so you'll see neural, neural tangent kernels or NTKs. Uh, then you have uh, PAC ba uh, base bounds. You like this whole entire, entire paper will give you like a very deep understanding of the uh, model architectures that currently exist and then uh, how exactly they relate to different uh, neuro and neuro inspired and physics inspired architectures right and that's kind of the uh, big things and the big uh, evolutions within this it gives it kind of like the, the tree and and what we've run into uh, when working on these models and and towards problems with these models like for example like time dynamics right that's a that's what we're still working through and towards but we have snns which uh, include temporal encoding via spikes so spiking neural networks uh, we have task driven implicit time representations uh con and then conventional neural networks that are often absent unless we utilize rnns but so it gives you kind of like uh, exactly where we're at with each of these uh, bottlenecks and theoretical constructs and how exactly they're uh, relating, being solved for, uh, et cetera. And then so uh, lots of different uh, modalities and, and methods, et cetera, within that, right? 
then it dives deep into generalization, the whole concept of generalization. So this is where we're at right now overall with a generalization as it works towards the models and the biggest uh, adaptation that we have with regards towards the models and generalization at the moment is test time at, at adaptation. Uh, there's a lot of different ways, uh, like test, like anything that involves test time, like, uh, like training the model at test time. Uh, essentially, that's generalization as we're currently deploying it and working it at the moment, right? Like, uh, I, I don't think people understand, like, kind of the, the breakthrough within that and how important it is. So it's like, essentially, I can take a model that has uh, no prior understanding of a particular subject. And then if I essentially, I train it directly at test time, meaning that I, I that update its weights, I give it information about it, et cetera. Like, I literally give it a test time training program to run beforehand, let's say, you know, for uh, even like a few minutes beforehand before taking the test, uh, significantly improves performance and allows for generalization of models in ways that are, that have been previously unavailable. Um, and then rag tuning, which is uh, kind of the, the big overall approach within that. And then uh, 5.4 dives into real world adaptation. That's kind of the big thing that we're working through now with models and, and like the, the uh, big, uh, progression within that, right? And then the big progression that has been worked on all around that is reasoning. So chain of thought, tree of thought, and reasoning acting models, uh, the, React mo the React framework. Then you have reinforcement learning and then th that alignment within AGI and then all the different methods beyond that and then behind that. And then you also have integrative frameworks like uh, Swarm GPT, for example, highlighting that. And then all of the different, these are all of the different training methods that you can utilize for reinforcement learning. So like essentially, like, so let's say that you want, like you're using, using this document and then you just wanted a quick reference for reinforcement learning. You would just go here to number six. This gives you like a very quick reference of everything that you need to know. The foundational, the, the uh, cognitive foundations of reinforcement learning. The, all of the different like types of integrated fr frameworks that you can use, uh, and then the the like uh, optimization policies, right? So these are like all of the different ways that you can train it, either PPO, DPO, or GRPO, uh, and then you get all of this at a glance at like oh, just basically like half a page of information just directly there, right? And then it's it's for everything. So then it, uh, RLHF. Uh, societal integration like and then it dives deeper into the models as we dive deeper into this like, into the the specific models right so lms vlms and agentic ai and then again just like more of these like uh, charts and maps overall as to like exactly how all these things re relate together all of the different types of lms like so all of the different modalities that we have built out right now right so we have uh, lms large language models large concept models video language models and mixture of experts models and then so we have kind of more of a general framework now than just lms like most models now are actually like more vlm and or moe uh, with lcms uh, being like kind of championed by meta so you might see more and more lcms now that they've invested with like a hundred billion dollars or something uh, directly into uh, their division, but like uh, LCM models is 100% championed by uh, Meta and, and Jan Lacoon overall. Uh, but then so gives you again, like uh, just the whole entire structure within there, basic, and then you have a basic rundown here. If you want more information, like that quick snapshot of LCM models, you have that here. Same thing for large reasoning models, mixture of experts, Neural Society of Agents. So it's just diving more into like more advanced frameworks, agentic frameworks, et cetera, right? And it's just like literally, like, it, this is like a survey overall of like, again, where we're at overall with AI period, right? Uh, and then anything that you would want to know about it, again, with the framework that all of this is outside of next token prediction. And then so it's like you want to think like, oh, we're just like uh, the models are just next token predictors. Here's the entire research paper showcasing to you every single aspect and every single avenue uh, of exploration that has been done, is currently being done, and is looking towards towards the future with regards towards these models and a uh, framework and an environment that is completely unrelated related towards next token prediction. Uh, and then so overall, I'll leave a link to this particular research paper, Thinking Beyond Tokens, from brain-inspired intelligence to cognitive foundations for artificial and general intelligence and its societal impact. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.